Welcome to another episode of Tim Summer Garden. Okay, so just to give you a really quick look around the uh, the greenhouse because things are moving on quite quickly. These are the um, it's the ninth of May today. So these are the sunflowers we put in. As you can see, these have really shot up um, in the last uh, in the last couple of days. You know, I mean they've, they've they've probably grown about two inches in the last two days. But uh, so they're the sunflowers. At the back here, we've got the uh, the basil. So we've got the two different varieties in that tray, and then we've got the third variety over in those two little trays there. Um, down here, the strawberries are um, rooting away quite nicely. They're obviously growing. Those are the calabrese that not not quite um, started yet, but they went in a couple of days ago. Um, this is the um, Scottish kale, so that's still growing. That'll go out um, shortly. Tomato plants are growing um, really quickly, so I'll need to get those into the uh, the borders before too much longer. Now the um, I've got to be honest with you, the, the butternut squashes and the pumpkins and everything are suffering a little bit. As you can see, the leaves are going a bit yellow, and I think that's I think that's due to well, it's one of three things. Uh, one of which has been eliminated because I've already watered it with um, with magnesium, so so that should be okay. But I think it's a it's either a case of overwatering or the pot bound or whatever. But basically, I'll need to get these in the ground as soon as possible. But because of the weather. Um, unfortunately, um, as you can see, last night it got down to sort of 1.3 um, in the greenhouse, so I'm, I'm a bit worried about putting them out at the minute because another couple of degrees below there and they'd be they'd be uh, damaged. The um, woolly bear gourds, absolutely nothing yet. Um, that's an acandra that's come through on there, so ignore that. Um, the asparagus peas are doing quite well again. They're looking like they need to go out, to be honest with you. This is the um, birdhouse gourd. I've got two of those come through. One there and one there. The ivy gourds, I've got a couple of those come through. Those are the sweet peppers that have just been potted up. Some more tomatoes. Those are the um, safflowers that have uh, managed to come through. Now, this is the um, yakon that... Uh, um, that Tina and Jason sent me in, as you can see, it's it's gone absolutely mad. It's 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 growing like comfort at the minute, aren't you? It's it's growing really quickly. And if you remember, this is the one that was damaged. This was the smallest one, I think, or or the or the middle one. And those are the leaves that are damaged. As you can see, it's thrown out a whole new um, load of leaves. Uh, those are the two um, Gardener's Delight um, tomatoes, which need um, potting up now. Really, uh, that's a little rosemary plant. This is the. This is the Acolo, um, and that's growing quite nicely, so that'll be put out shortly as well. The parsnips are growing really well. As you can see, each cell's got a parsnip in. I've got loads of these little plants here. I don't know if anybody can see them, but they're everywhere. I'm not quite sure what they are, uh, but if, uh, I've actually got them in here as well. I don't know if you can see the like, little... Um, in fact, I think... Oh, I think I've worked it out. I think they're off the... Um, they're off the grapevine. So they're these little flowers here, look. Anyway, um, the beans, they're all coming through as you can see, uh, they're all starting to shoot. So these have been in now about a week, so these are all the uh, the runner beans, uh, as you can see. Uh, they're all sort of coming through, um, all here as well. These are also um, runner beans here, so there's the odd one just starting to come through there. You can see that the ground's disturbed, there's your shoot. And then these two here are the um, the climbing beans, so they're also starting to come through, you can see evidence in quite a few. You can see the kind of the compost cracks at the top where the where the bean's trying to force its way through. There you go, look, it's just inside there. So they're all coming through. Uh, cucumber plants um, doing okay. This one is looking a little bit yellow, but uh, again, um, I'll need to get these in the ground and get them going. Um, these are the um, Alicante um, tomatoes. 
Um, so they really need to go out as well. They're starting to get a bit crowded. But what I'm hoping to do is to start to clear a bit of room now. Um, and so what I can do is actually clear one side of the greenhouse. Then I can start to get to the, um, the, um, the tomatoes in. But a lot of these tomatoes will actually go into pots in my other greenhouse um, this year. So what I might be able to do is kind of thin these out a little bit to give them a bit more room to, uh, to grow. But that's what the greenhouse is looking like at the moment, except for what I have missed is that's the one remaining, uh, one surviving fuchsia uh, that actually got through the winter in here without, um, without dying. So that's uh, it's actually a hardy fuchsia. Um, that's the cayenne pepper. Um, um, don't overwater peppers. Uh, that's the best bit of advice I can give you. I, I water this probably once or twice a week. And you can start to see that there's flowers and fruit starting um, to form at the top there. Um, the grapevine, as you can see, is in flower, um, which is all these these little bits here. And you can see the little bunches of grapes all the way along. Um, so it's got a lot further this year than it has before. So uh, all being well, uh, we'll get some grapes later this year. But that's what the grapevine looks like. Um, so that's pretty much the greenhouse as it stands on the 9th of May. Okay, so I just thought to give you a quick tour of the field. Um, this time of year is always best because uh, it's when people start putting things in. This this plot here, this, this has changed hands this year, so uh, the people I've been doing, uh, the new people have been doing some bits and bobs. As you can see, they've got some broad beans in there, strawberry patching cabbages from last year, but um, they're sort of working on their, their uh, plot. It looks like they've got a couple of rows of potatoes in at the front here. Uh, this plot here, um, because of the trees and that, um, there's nobody actually using this at the minute, so I think they're um, talking about having this a bit of a car park or such, but we have the um, the wood chip and the grass dropped off here um, for people to, um, you know, for everybody to sort of use, so um, this plot isn't actually used at the moment. This one's just been, um, and this one's just um, changed hands as well, as you can see we've got plenty of rows of potatoes in there, and uh, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with the uh, the back part of it. Um, this one here, um, as you can see, they've got some uh, brassicas in there. They've made a cage out of um, Harris fencing um, panels on there. And uh, they've got some, um, looks like kale on this side here. Um, this is um, rotted down uh, wood chip, which is uh, often used on uh, the plot. Uh, this one here has just changed hands as well. That's. Um, that's all been dug over, we've got a few um, rows of potatoes in there as you can see and uh, this was all weed last year so they've worked really hard and got that quite straight now. Um, this plot here um, actually won the uh, the Warwickshire Cup last year um, and John and Anne they, they're, uh, they're up here quite a lot. Got the strawberries here, onions, um, they use the um, Harris fence panels as well um, to um, to put the, uh, the brassicas and peas and anything else that birds all sort of attack. As you can see they've got peas in here. Um, they've also got some, uh, I don't know if you can see but just over there, that's um, that's actually some um, spinach. But uh, it looks like it's um, suffering a little bit. He's, all, he's already started putting some um, brassicas in here. Um, as you can see he's got some, um, I'm not quite sure, oh, he's got flower sprouts in there. Um, bits and bobs, he's got his potatoes in all here. Um, as you can see some of these have come up. Um, a lot of people put um, grass on the top of their potatoes uh, this time of year because that protects them against the uh, uh, the frost and that so if you get any frost coming at night uh, that just protects the tops from being damaged. Um, as you can see John's got his, um, I'm not quite sure what that is there, but he's got his um, some more brassicas in there, it looks like he's just dug this bit over. Those are his chickens, John's got loads of chickens. Uh, and that's the same um, same lot as my cockerel. My cockerel came out of the same um, lot of eggs as that lot. Uh, um, and uh, just quickly walk over here. This is uh, John's really uh, got some really nice um, uh, asparagus here, uh, which is a lot of my seed came from there. Uh, his raspberries all here. That he's just cut down. Obviously, these are growing. These are autumn autumn raspberries in here. Um, his greenhouse. Um, so that's all of uh, John and Anne's plot. Um, as I say, they, you know, they use these Harris fence panels for 
um, their sort of protection their brassicas where I've got the tunnel and they use these um, okay just moving along here obviously I will show you in a couple of months time when stuff starts coming through but uh, they've already put some of their um, uh, gourds out as you can see perhaps a little bit early because it's, it's still quite cold but um, looks like they're uh, probably pumpkins rather look like it. Uh, as you can see there's lots of potatoes out um, already starting to uh, just to come through um, little row of raspberries here uh, onions and onions and bits and bobs in there lots of lots more potatoes uh, and there's some um, brassicas at the back there I grew the ones at the end here those that's some of the kale um, that uh, Vince has put in but uh, that's Vince's little plot there uh, this is John's plot as you can see he's got his Japanese onions running there he's doing quite nicely um, some standard onions which are a little bit ahead of mine but he starts his off in the greenhouse there's broad beans in as well um, on this side some more broad beans um, asparagus bed in there as well that's coming through quite nicely um, and they put the I'm not sure if they're leeks or if they're onions probably leeks to bother look of them some more cabbages um, some more onions and then coming around here, this is uh, this is George's plot. He's just strimmed all the front over, but he's uh, he's got this half plot here, and uh, he's got various bits and bobs and peas at the front here, uh, broad beans. He's got his um, brassicas under little cages there. There's some potatoes in here, beans. Uh, and this is uh, his little fruit bit here. He's got strawberries and various little um, gooseberry bushes and stuff. This is Julie's half plot, and uh, she's got potatoes and um, some broad beans in and that. Uh, this is John's plot, who's, who's actually next to me, and he's got potatoes. He's got a whole manner of stuff in here. He's got rhubarb and um, fruit, um, fruit bushes and raspberries at the back, and he's got his two sort of polished ones there with his um, uh, tomatoes growing in as well. Uh, and down here he's got a whole manner of stuff going, he's got his broad beans, some potatoes, onions around the edge um, and then he's got some, some parsnips growing in there um, some swede, some more parsnips, carrots and then the front bit here John always puts uh, loads of flowers in so he's got his uh, well there's, there's, there's a whole raft of flowers in there that he's, uh, he, what he typically does is broadcast the seed across this front bit and um, he's got his dahlias up the side there and there and up the middle and then he normally puts sunflowers across the back and then all at the front here he's got a whole manner of um, flowers and bits and bobs so that this this features often in my uh, videos because he's always got some nice flowers uh, that's John's plot again he's got his brassicas so you can see he's put some cardboard round or some carpet round the bottom of them um, some people do that to stop the um, the uh, the uh, the flea beetles getting in at the bottom of the brassicas which is you know sometimes they sort of attack the roots and stuff this is Chris's plot he's got a he's got his beans at the front here um, some leeks onions garlic at the front there this is uh, was his asparagus bed but it looks like uh, I don't know if he's taken oh no he's moved his asparagus sorry it's here so that's his asparagus it was there he moved it to here uh, his rhubarb and his strawberries um, He's going to be planting potatoes in here, he's just dug all this over, he's uh, rotivated it all through and uh, he's done a cracking job to be honest with you. I'm not sure if he's planted this bit yet but uh, that's where he's going to be putting I think his potatoes in there. Chris always grows loads of gourds and stuff, he's really good at um, growing, uh, he grows these great big long gourds and that which he uh, uses quite a lot. He's got some potatoes in there by the look of it, um, quite close so I'd imagine they're, they're um, I'm not quite sure what he's got in, I have got a note on, but here uh, yeah, they are close, so they must be early potatoes. Um, got some other bits and bobs growing here, I'm not quite sure what he's got in because there's no notes. Uh, this is Dougie's um, allotment and he's got a very much uh, sort of cottagey type feel to his allotment. He, he has all sorts of stuff growing uh, amongst each other and uh, you can see he's got his raspberries here and he's got more raspberries here. Um, at the back he's got loads of comfrey in a pond and stuff um, and uh, he's got uh, uh, asparagus here and he's got his potatoes and all, all, all sorts of bits and bobs and he's got carrots under here 
Uh, he's also got carrots in this raised part here. Um, he's got carrots and parsnips in there. Um, so he's so he's doing really well, really. Uh, and up, up the front there, he's got some garlic, onions, and beans, just like everybody else. Um, this is Dennis's plot. He's got his brassicas at the end. Now he's he takes a different approach to protecting his brassicas. He he makes this kind of tent every year, um, and then he's just grow cracking um, brassicas. To be honest with you, he's got uh, quite a lot. Now Dennis's brother used to have uh, the plot that I've got. So uh, Dennis has been up here. I think this plot used to be his father's before him. So I think his family have had this plot since basically these allotments were here. So he's a bit of a veteran when it comes to allotment hearing. Uh, he's got his onions and potatoes in here. Um, just moving on, this is Keith's plot next to me. So he's got all his potatoes in the front here. He's put loads of, loads of good stuff in here. As you can see, he's got wood chip and all sorts of bits and bobs in there. So his potatoes are just coming up. Um, that's his brassica cage and he's got his, his bean sticks up down here. He, he again uses Harris fence panels to protect his brassicas. He's not got any in yet, but uh, he'll be planting them in there before too much longer. Um, and then this is his strawberries he's just put in. He's just planted a new um, set of strawberries and uh, obviously his beans will be going in here. Uh, he's got his, uh, these are his parsnips here. You can just about see his parsnips coming through here. So you can see that there's a row in the middle there. Um, there's my plot there, so obviously you recognise that bit. He's got some more um, strawberries and raspberries and stuff there. He's not planted the back bit yet. Um, this plot's just been taken on by Paul, and he's uh, he's managed to construct himself a bit of a tunnel, uh, which is quite uh, which is quite a good uh, construction. He's got this corrugated plastic on, and uh, he's going to be growing his tomatoes and uh, other bits and bobs in here. Uh, there's some tomatoes that I gave him the other day that he'll be, they'll be planting in here. Um, he's got his carrots in a raised bed there. Garlic and onions um, down here and he's got some potatoes in here. But as I say, this was just completely overgrown so he's, he's, he's done really well to get in there and he's going to be having chickens in that, this, this sort of back bit here. So um, he's going to have chickens and ducks in there so I'll be able to feature them in coming up videos as well. Uh, he's put some raspberries in along here. Uh, and then coming along here, um, looks like we've got some potatoes going in here as well. This was all dug over last week. Um, this is Mr Cottrell's plot. He's got some quite nice looking peas coming up. Um, so those are his rubber peas there. He's got some brassicas in. Again, loads of potatoes in. Um, he's got some rainbow chard and some... Um, beans and he's got these raspberry raspberry bushes in at the back there and uh, he's got a whole manner of bits and bobs but uh, uh, he's he's been on this uh, plot for some time now um, quite quite a good number of years look at his uh, his uh, asparagus uh, that's that's some impressive asparagus there it's got the size of that one there that's probably about an inch across uh, some herbs at the back here he's rhubarb and that uh, this is Bill's plot. He's he's uh, he's a really dedicated um, a lot of material as well. He's got his strawberries there, onions. Uh, I'm guessing he's got peas in there. Um, and he's got his uh, some more brassicas here, more potatoes coming through. Um, I'd imagine that's his beans there. Uh, those are his uh, broad beans, which are looking very impressive at the moment. A couple of foot high possibly the biggest. He's got some peas in there. Now, he, this is his, um, he always grows lots of sweet corn, so this kind of fence here, um, he always grows his, um, his sort of sweet corn in there, you know, just to protect it, but uh, looks like he's uh, he's got himself some pipes around his sweet corn just to protect it a little bit from the frost. Um, okay, in this plot here, this gentleman grows a whole manner of unusual vegetables, but he's got his onions at the front, Beans here, looks like they've been attacked by something. He's got his peas, um, beetroot already growing. Then we've got plenty of rows of potatoes here, some more brassicas at the back. Um, brassicas in here. I'm not quite sure if he's got anything in here yet, but uh, I'd imagine he's going to fill most of this with uh, potatoes and stuff like that. Uh, and then down the back here, we've got Vanessa and Roy's plot. Um, they've also uh, 
done really well with the uh, the Warwickshire allotment um, uh, competition as well. They've they've uh, always done really well. As you can see, we're surrounded by fields here. So these are just basically field, from, from here on in. It's fields as far as you can see. Um, but uh, as I say, this is Vanessa and Roy's. That's perpetual onions, I think. Um, those are the ones where you get uh, the, the kind of like spring onions, but the sort of halfway between chives and spring onions. Um, but uh, Vanessa and Roy grow all sorts of all sorts of stuff. We've got some salad here, some spring onions, normal onions, garlic. That's garlic, definitely. Uh, some lettuce under there. Some brassicas, some more brassicas, some more lettuce uh, grown under there. Um, uh, some flowers and bits and bobs here. Uh, I think that's um, that's an acandra there. I think a uh, couple of rows of peas and beans, and then they've got the um, the potatoes in at this end here, and some more flowers. Um, this is not that's aquilegia. Always a nice plant to grow. But uh, so that's Vanessa and Roy's plot, and then here we've got our little shed at the end. Uh, then this is uh, Dave's plot. Um, and he's got uh, he's got some radish growing here. You can see the beetle's gone through that again. Um, now Dave grows really nice. Got loads of thyme at the front here. Um, Dave grows really well, uh, really good um, asparagus. And he's been cropping this now for a while. But as you can see, this is his asparagus bed. A lot of the seed for mine came from here as well. So mine's a combination of um, seed from here and also from John's that I showed you down the bottom end. But um, this is this is uh, Dave's plot. It's got some more um, lots of brassica. It looks like um, I see the, the the notes under the side. I'll be able to tell you what it is. I think the only radish he's got is that there. But uh, he's uh, he'll be growing tomatoes here later. He puts glass across and grows tomatoes outside. But uh, what's he got planted in here? Let's have a look. Oh, parsnips. Don't look like parsnips. Definitely not parsnips, but uh, anyway, I'm not sure what they've got in there, but he's obviously got a row of something. He's got his row of peas in there, raspberries, beans. Um, he's put his potatoes in. Uh, he's got three rows of potatoes in there. These are the giant, giant potatoes that he grows. Loads of mint. Uh, and he's also got some chickens like me. And as you can see, these are well summers. Um, hens that he's got. Well, those two are Wellsons. I'm not quite sure about this one here. That's that's not a Wellson. These two are. Um, but those are his chickens uh, that he's had here longer than anybody else, I think. He also used to keep um, bees here, but um, he doesn't he doesn't uh, keep bees anymore. But uh, his beehive was uh, back here, just just about here. Um, and this lady's had an allotment for some time as well. This is uh, she's got a whole manner of. Um, uh, bushes, fruit bushes and trees and stuff at the back here and then at the front it grows a lot of um, flowers and that so you've got tulips and all sorts of bits and bobs here uh, this is quite a common plant, this is the egg egg plant, uh, quite a few people grow that uh, but it's quite early for it uh, and then this is another uh, sort of plot here. you saw the front bit of it earlier but uh, there's plenty of um, fruit trees and bits and bobs it's quite a natural sort of type um, plot so there's loads of um, berry berry bushes and apple trees um, the apple tree at the back there is always laden with with apples that's uh, I've shown that on a couple of pictures on the on the video because as you can see he's been digging this over as well right now this is this this is a different take on um, beans. Obviously they're going to put beans along here. So what they've done is they've driven in some um, uh, some poles, uh, some steel um, scaffolding poles, and put a steel pole across the top. And they put that in as the main structure. And then they'll they'll put the sticks up as soon as the beans are um, finished. Obviously there's different ways of doing it. Keith Keith next to me also does that. He's got like a metal frame. Um, and rather than putting his bean poles in like I do, uh, he's got a metal frame that he puts in first and then just puts his bamboo up against that. So, uh, this is Paul's plot again. So I'll just quickly show you that before I, uh, before I finish. 
Uh, this is Paul's garlic house. It looks like it's come at the ground a bit. Um, but as you can see here, um, Keith puts up a like a metal frame and then ties these. So he's got a metal frame to start with, which is nice and sturdy. Drives this into the ground with a with a hammer, and then he's got his uh, bit of conduit in there um, to give him, you know, a good solid structure. And then he just runs his um, runs his bamboo and ties her up against that, which works quite well for him. Um, obviously, on my on my plot, I don't put steel. And the problem the problem I've got with mine is I've got a lot of sandstone under my plot. Um, so the part that I've been digging at the back. Uh, the soil is only probably about 18 inches deep and then I'm hitting sandstone. So where all the raspberries, where the greenhouse sits um, and where the uh, where the strawberries used to be, uh, which I'm just currently digging out, um, all of that sandstone. So when I put this metal framework in for the, uh, the raspberries and the trees and stuff to go in, um, basically the sandstone about 18 inches below the um, soil level and uh, so what I had to do when I was putting these poles in was dig down to the sandstone and then cut through the sandstone to actually get these in because these are in the ground about two foot. Um, so I had to dig down, dig the soil out of the way till I got to the rock and then I had to drill through the rock with a core cutter to get, actually get these in. Um, and this ground here which I'm currently digging over, uh, you know, as soon as I put the spade in or the fork, um, I'm actually hitting sandstone at the bottom. So, uh, you know, the, the, the soil's quite shallow here which is why I've got the greenhouse and the other sort of shallow rooted plants in it. I, I couldn't really grow potatoes here because uh, the ground's not deep enough for them. But that's what the field looks like um, at the beginning of May. So, I hope this episode has some use to you. Please don't hesitate to point your comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lumber Garden.